Welcome back, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Yes, happy Sabbath. Um, now we're listening to your favorite music. Ready. So, right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at chapter 7. We looked at chapter 6, warning against foolishness, warning against adultery. Funny. Now, chapter 7 is warnings about the adulteress. Let's get into it. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. Now, I know some feminists are going to be like, oh, why is he talking about um, only adulteress? How about the adulterer? Yes, it's for both of them. It's for both of them. The only difference is, most of the time, when men go and do that kind of stuff, and I'm not trying to justify what men do. No, it's not good. It's not good. Usually when men do that kind of stuff, it's for just pleasure. It's not like anything wrong or bad. And you can just do it and not even care about that woman later on. But when the woman does that kind of stuff, most of most of the time, there is something she likes about that other man that she would just do choose to commit that adultery with. And I think that's why most of the time when he says adulteress, not adulterer. Now, of course, there can, all, there can also be the cultural differences when, the, when Solomon wrote it. It could be frowned upon for the woman to be an adulteress than for the men. That happens as well. But we know for sure God is against both the... God is against adultery. Whether it's the men committing it, whether it's the woman committing it, or whether it's the men committing it. Okay? So don't take it like, oh, it's only, it's only about the women. No. It's for both of them. All right, let's move on. Uh, yeah. Bind them upon thy figure, that, uh, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. And usually, we you see, this kind of stuff, I don't want to repeat them again because it is something we've looked at already. You know, keep bind them upon thy, thy eye and thy um, forehead, thy heart. Basically saying, live according to the law. Live according to the law, but not because you're afraid of making a mistake, but live as because you like the law, because you love the law. You want to do what is good, not the evil thing, basically. Let's move on. And verse number four. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. I don't think I need to explain many of these because you guys can actually see that these are basically straightforward. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the strange stranger which flattereth with her words. So even though it's talking specifically about a woman, so here's one thing I, I I've come to realize. There is a way a woman. It's gonna look like I'm talking against women, but it's not. There is a way a woman can try to get a man to sleep with her. That if the man tried that same approach, he would be considered a creep. A woman can go out there and say, "Hey, I wanna sleep." We can. You know, who would like to sleep with me? Men would gladly take up on it. Now, not all of them, but some men will be like, no. Most, yes, they will, because we 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 because what we are thinking is, well, I don't have the tree in my house. <laughs> yes, it's like a woman finding um, a man comes to women and say, hey, ladies, who wants a hundred a hundred dollars today? Most women are going to say, I want, I do. 
women decide to give sex, men take it. Men decide to give money, women take it. It's how it works. But when it comes to the sex part, most of the time, a woman can walk up to a man and make some advances and he's like, okay, he, she definitely wants to do that. If the man does the exact same thing, she's going to be creeped out. She'll be like, oh, you're a creep. You're a sexual predator. Da -da 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 -da. So that's why I think sometimes we talk about the woman, not the man. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. What is casement? Casement? I wonder what... Oh, a window. Okay, never mind. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth, a young man void of understanding. Most likely, that's, that's the men who have been trapped by a strange woman. When you don't live according to God's principle, you're going to be trapped in a way that you would wish you could have been out of it. He discerned a among the simple ones. What are the simple ones? Simple ones are the people that are open-minded. It's nothing wrong with being simple one, to be an open-minded person. But you got to make sure to whom you are being open-minded to. If it's to God and his word, sure, go ahead. If it's to a strange woman or an adulteress, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Boom. There we go. So, it looks like this woman is a whore. I'm going to put it that way. It looks like she is a whore. Why? Because, yes, I know you're talking about adulterers, but think about it as well. How would he know exactly where to go? You see, whenever God speaks about the Israelites, when they went after other gods, God didn't call them adulterers as a people, as his woman. He called them what? Whore. You went out and what? And hoard after other gods. When God was trying to get Israel to understand their behavior, what did they do? Go read the book of Hosea. God asked Hosea, marry what? A prostitute. Not an adulteress a prostitute, a whore, to show the Israelites this woman that he married is exactly what you guys are doing as well. When it says here that he was passing through the streets near her corner and went the way to her house, you know what? Let me, let me read the rest of it. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him whom? A woman with the attire of him, what? Harlot and subtle of heart. What does that mean? You see, when I mention that when God talks about adulteress, it's not just because it's an adulteress. Before I even, okay, right now I'm reading that chapter with you guys. I haven't read the chapter. I was in chapter, first number eight. I already mentioned that she is a whore. One. You know one reason why I know she's a whore? Because when you look at that word corner, most of the time, when we talk about women in the corner, standing in the corner, sitting in the corner, either in the street or something, it usually alludes to a prostitute. Because in the corner, everyone can see where her house is. Yes. Why do you think a lot of big corporations, they build their businesses 
next to a highway, next to a road, on a corner. That way, nobody can miss it. Guys, think about it. Think about it. I think that's going to be part one. Because I want you guys to understand what, what, what we are doing right here. Okay? It says, it says, passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. That means morning, evening, night. He is there. Why would you be there? And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and a subtle of heart. And that word subtle, even though it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Did you read about chapter 3 of Genesis? The serpent was cunning or subtle. Being subtle is not a bad thing. It's how you use it. If she has... Now, what is the modern day attire of a harlot? We have to understand that part. But I'm going to flip it right here. Because it's going to be very long. Uh, part. This is part one. And then we're going to have part two next time. Anyway, guys, it was again the open TV. Push for thought.